Ok. Ok, good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce to Klaus Ixen and, and Andrea Consentino. Um, please, one second to, to give the details about the session. The, the session is Apache Camel 3, the next generation of enterprise integration. Klaus Ixen is an open source enthusiast and senior principal software developer from Red Hat. Uh, he is co-leading co the Apache Camel project. Um, Apache, a project used for integration, which he has been working on full-time for more than a decade, uh, 10 years. Currently, Klaus is working on expanding Camel into cloud native and serverless with the latest innovation of Apache Camel K and Camel Quarkus. Uh, Andrea Consentino is an open source addicted and software developer. He co leads Apache Camel and he's the project management commit chair of the project. Thank you guys for your, particip for your participation in this conference. Um, is the time. Can you start if you want? Yes, certainly. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Klaus, and Andrea is also here. Hello. So let's get started. And I will be sharing my screen, doing slides and demos, and so on. So give me a second to set it up and wait a little bit for the screen to appear on your end. Well, I start with the slides. So you should see uh, Google Slides here. I go into full screen mode. So again, and welcome to the session. It's about what's new with Apache Camel 3. Um, I can give a little more details about myself, even though you know I was nicely introduced. Um, I work on Camel for more than 10 years. I'm co-leading the Camel together with Andrea. So you have both of us here on the same talk. I wrote a couple of books on Camel, and I'm based in Denmark. Um, I also have a blog, and you can find on uh, social media. Andrea, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Klaus. So I'm Andrea Cosentino, and I'm based in Rome, in Italy. Uh, I'm Apache Software Foundation member, and actually I'm co-leading Apache Camel with Klaus, and I'm also the PMC chair. Uh, of the project. So you can find me on Twitter and on GitHub. And uh, let's get back to Klaus then. OK. So in this session, we will just begin from the beginning and introducing you to Camel, and especially what's new with Camel 3. And also pay attention to how we do releases now. Then the meat of the talk is about the three latest innovations in Camel. Camel K, Camel Quarkus, and Kafka connectors. And at the end, we have some uh, links for where you can find more material. And of course, we have time for Q&A. And during this session, you know, feel free to type in your questions in the chat as well. So we have a number of questions ready when we come to the end. But let's start with, what is Camel? That's a really good question. And I have been trying to answer that for more than 10 years, and I'm not a perfect answer yet, but this is maybe the one that uh, illustrates the best, is a Swiss knife of integration. Actually, maybe it's a giant Swiss knife um, because Camel comes with a lot of functionality. But don't be afraid, you know, Camel is very um, sensible in that you can just use the bits you need of Camel. So you don't need to learn everything from Camel before you can use Camel, just use the little bits uh, you need. You need and, and learn that and then you know you can step by step learn more and, and get more powerful with camel but it has a great number of features so it's a java integration framework it's actually just a library so it's just a set of java files you can use together with the application so you know it's very flexible it works with all the popular java frameworks uh, and platforms we're going to see that in, in a bit now, Camel is based on the principles uh, from a book called Enterprise Integration Patterns. Um, you're going to see them in action. And also a very key feature of Camel that comes with a lot of components. 
or maybe you can think them as connectors. So you can connect to a lot of different systems from legacy system to modern system, to cloud system, to online SaaS systems and whatnot. Uh, Camel has everything under the sun. And how you actually, you know, describe or code how to integrate is you use a, a flow or routes, as they call in Camel. And for that, you can use Java code, XML, and some other language. And don't be afraid, we're gonna see them in, in the demos and so. So basically, Camel, you can integrate almost everything. So Camel is just a library, and it works great with all the popular Java runtimes, whether it's Spring Boot or the latest one is Quarkus, Tomcat even, you know, OSI Carafe, Kafka, Vertex, Wi-Fi, MicroProfile uh, servers, and standalone Camel, and Jetty, Drop Wizards, and whatnot. So you can just run Camel anywhere where you want. Camel has an awesome community. This is maybe the biggest greatness of Camel. Um, the product itself has actually been around for 13 years. So on the bottom, you can see the activity on the product in number of uh, commits. And as you can see, I don't really think there has been a time where uh, myself and Adria had a, let's say, a vacation. There might be in the beginning or towards 2008, just before 2008, there might be, you know, during the Christmas holiday. That's the slowest peak. Otherwise, uh, there's activity and a lot of contributors on the product uh, every day. And you can see the, the graph is actually increasing. And one of the things is that is Camel was created before GitHub, but GitHub is sort of like a popular way of contributing and work on on open source products that is actually picking up and allows a lot more people to do that. And also from 2019, we started working on Camel 3. So there's a lot of work going on there. Uh, but what about the Camel basics? So basically, um, this is probably the base, most basic with Camel is its routes, Camel routes. So, this is maybe the simplest camel route you can find in camel. So you integrate two systems, a file system and a message broker system using Java JMS. So in camel, you can actually describe or code this in a camel route. And that's actually two lines of code from, and uh, then you specify which directory to look for files. And then for the JMS system, you can just tell it which queue it is, JMS queue order. And in, if you use XML, then you can also do the same there. And then you may say, okay, which one should I use? Well, it doesn't really matter. From Camel point of view, what happens is that at runtime, when Cam execute these routes, it becomes the same execution model under the hooding inside Camel. So they are both on the same level. They have the same features and they're both the same, uh, let's say, speed and, uh, and footprint. But some users like using XML, there may be some better tooling support for some pieces in Camel. But even though the uh, Java code we're going to see in the demos has picked up really fast, and you can get excellent tooling support there as well. But sometimes people just want to you know, integrate something easily with XML, and you don't need to code so much. And this is also a feature with it, what is called no code, low code uh, movement that is coming. And we're going to see that a bit in, in with Camel K. Now, the architecture of Camel. This is what you see on the slide here today. Is in the center we have Camel context. That is actually Camel. That is the runtime Camel. So the idea is that you can add routes to this context, and inside these routes you can use these enterprise integration patterns, where you can do routing, transformation, mediation, uh, enrichment, and all these kind of things. And then in the bottom you have Camel components, which are used to connect to different systems. Like you know we talked before about file and DMS, but of course you also have. Kafka and many other systems. There are more than 300 components. So how do I actually just run a little camera example? And there's a link for it in the bottom. But basically, what you need to do, you can just take a public static void main class. So there's no Matic Spring Boot or Quarkus or whatever. It's just, just the main class. So the, the thing you do is to create a camera context and using good old fashioned new uh, constructor. And then there's a default camel context, okay? Then on this camel context, you can add routes to it. So add routes, then you can inline 
um, that route using a, something called a route builder. That is a class from Camel that allows you to define the routes in its configure method. So here we're just saying from a timer. So every the timer will trigger every second by default, and then we'll just lock. Very basic. Then we can start Camel. But the start operation is a non-blocking operation. So we just sleep for 10 seconds, then we stop Camel. Uh, that's a very basic one. Um, oh, going back to this one. This is the essence of Camel. And pay attention how powerful Camel is. If I tell you, OK, instead of using a timer, if you need to pick up files from FTP server, then basically it will be just saying from FTP, then the host name of the server, and maybe some credential to log in. And then Camel is able to connect to a remote FTP server, look for new files, and download these files and lock them, for example, or, not, or you can send them to Kafka. So this is very powerful. Now, um, a very popular runtime is Spring Boot. And if you want to use Camel on Spring Boot, then it's basically just, again, uh, you can define your Camel routes in the Route Builder class. So here I have my Camel router that extends Route Builder. Route Builder is the class from Camel. Inside my configure method, I define the routes. And here, again, is a timer, right? I call a timer, and then I call a Java bean, and then I stream it out to system up. And because this is Spring, I can use Spring dependency injection. So I can use AutoWired and what else, you know, uh, dependency injection being Spring Boot comes with. And just for having Spring Boot to, or Camel inside Spring Boot to auto detect these routes, you just add this add component annotation you have in the top of the slide. Now, another framework that is gaining popularity and, and is called Quarkus, so this we're also gonna see later in demos. It's similar to like Spring Boot, you can just add a route. But in Quarkus, then we have enhanced Camel so it can automatically detect your route. So you don't have to add this at component annotation. So you just write your route and voila, Camel runs inside uh, Quarkus. And Quarkus also integrates with um, dependency injection of standard called CDI. So you can use CDI annotations here. So here's another slide with that, with add inject and config properties and whatnot. And just to say that Quarkus also supports the Spring dependency injection. So if you use Quarkus, you can still use Spring dependency injection if you want. So it, it supports both of them if you want. OK, that was just a little tease of the basis of Camel and running Camel uh, a standard void main in Spring Boot and Quarkus. Now, Andrea will talk to you about the, what's new and, and with the Camel 3 projects, the 300 Camel. <laughs> Thanks, Klaus. So uh, when uh, when we start to when we started to work on Camel Three, what we wanted to to create was uh, an ecosystem, some kind of ecosystem around Camel. And so we we split the the original project in multiple sub project, and we added multiple stuff, multiple new new project to the ecosystem. Oops. So we have Cam so we have Camel as the normal project, so the the base the base the base repository and the base project. And it's the milestone on, on which we will build all the all the ecosystem, and uh, we have Camel Spring Boot to run your uh, your Camel routes on on Spring Boot basically. Uh, then, if you love us GI, we have Camel Caraf, which is based on the Caraf container. Um, and then the new the new project of the of the family so camel k uh, which is camel on the camel on the cloud so for kubernetes and key native then we have camel quarkus uh, based on the new um, framework uh, quarkus uh, about you know faster have, having better performance in terms of startup of start time and the last one, the newest one, uh, Camel Kafka Connector, uh, which is a, a big Kafka Connector built on uh, on Camel. But we will see this later in the in the presentation. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, Camel releases, we uh, we choose to have an approach like uh, the Java approach. So we will have uh, two LTS releases during the during the year. And uh, 
basically uh, we we have already the first uh, LTS family which is based on camel 3.4 and we are already at uh, 3.4.4 uh, patch release and uh, we are working uh, to have the second release by the end of the this year and uh, which probably will be 37 and we we will probably support also java 14 in uh, in the next LTS and uh, the, the idea is to have the support for this LTS at least for uh, one year. So basically, we are following what what Java is doing. Okay, and uh, yeah, I'll get back to Klaus now. Thank you, Andrea. Um, yes, awesome model. You know, uh, if I may say that we have uh, the for example, we have released three five and just three six this week. Uh, three six was just released. And I love it, you know, it's able to have a rapid release schedule, a fairly rapid release schedule and do drive some innovations on releases that are not, you know, LTS releases, you know, super mission critical production grade, but, you know, pick up some uh, feedback in community and let people try the latest features and whatnot. And then, you know, we, we do uh, at least two LTS releases a year that, you know, we focus on for, you know, production systems and security fixes and whatnot. So this is a great model. It really is helping moving Camel uh, forward. So exciting new product or is Camel K. So what is that? So we have the this cat phrase of Camel K saying it's a lightweight integration platform based on Camel, born on Kubernetes with serverless superpowers. Okay, so Basically, with Camel K, you can run it on standard Kubernetes, just Kubernetes. You can also run it on um, different Kubernetes distribution, enterprise distribution like OpenShift from Red Hat, but also others. And as the catchphrase says, you get the best with uh, serverless superpowers, and that means K native. So we're going to see you know, some of that in action, but focus mostly on you know, the plain Camel K, which is running on standard. Kubernetes. So why it is and what does it, why should I care as a developer? So with the serverless movement and also with the, let's say, low code uh, movement, there is a trend towards, you know, being able to do some, build some apps or integration apps more quickly, but don't care so much about stack for starting up a full Java product, whether it's Spring Boot or something else where you have to you know, work with Gradle, Maven, and CI servers and many other things and code and code and code. You just actually just want to focus on, okay, for integration, I want to integrate from the Kafka to uh, Telegram and change the message here and there, and that's it. So you want the integration logic to be front and center. So that's the idea with Camel K. It's just a file. So you can write a Camel K integrations in Java, of course, but also in other languages like Groovy, Kotlin, JavaScript, XML, YAML, and so on. Just write the integration logic without so much uh, focus on anything else. And then you tell Camel, I want to run this file on this integration. And this one was apparently a Groovy file. And then Camel K takes over and all the magic happens. And what's going on, I will talk uh, and show you. So the architecture of Camel K is that we have a developer environment, and that could be anything. And then you have the Kubernetes or the cloud. It says remote cloud in this slide, but it it just means Kubernetes. Uh, I'm, for this demo, I'm running it locally on Minikube, but you can, as a user of Kubernetes, you maybe have it on your own organization. So you have a, a dedicated Kubernetes installation, or maybe you have it in the public cloud or hybrid or whatnot. It doesn't really matter so much. So what the magic is in the Kubernetes in the road cloud. So there's something, there's some forces here. So let me explain them. So in Kubernetes, it's a very extensible platform, and this is by design. So you can extend Kubernetes. And the way you do that is by using something called a custom resource definition, CRD. So what we've done is to make an integration custom resource that basically is Camel. And a custom resource definitions are operated 
by an operator. So we have a camel K operator. That one is installed inside Kubernetes. And the operator is like an agent. It runs all the time. And, and then it detects if there's any new custom resources uh, installed in the cluster, or they are changed, or they are deleted, or whatever. Any changes to these custom resources, like any other resource inside the, a Kubernetes cluster, then the operator figures out what to do. So in this uh, example, we can install a CRD with our integration. Then the operator finds out, okay, how should I, how, okay, this op integration needs to do X, Y, and Z. It's Java, it's using these kind of components. Okay, how, and then it figures out, okay, how to build this as a image, container image, and then it can run it just like any other thing you run in Kubernetes, you know, like, you know, Docker containers. And it can do this really fast. So we're gonna see this in a demo. So what I'm gonna do is to go on my terminal and then demo a bit and we can then go there and see. So I will exit here and I'll go to a terminal. So down here in the bottom, I have a, a terminal that watches my Cube CTL get pods. So you can see the CAMK operator is running. It's actually a little bit old. I'm actually not using the latest CAMK releases. It's one one two. I'm on one one. But sorry, I didn't have time to upgrade my cluster before this presentation. But one one is great anyway. So up here, I just I am on my desktop. So I can say, okay, I have Camel one one. Now I want to make a little integration. So I can say. Doesn't, you don't have to do it like this, but this is a neat trick with camel. You can say camel in it, and then the name of a file. And this one is a Java file, so we'll create a Java file, but you can also use Groovy, Kotlin, JavaScript, and whatnot. So now I have a foof Java file, and I can then say camel run foo Java. Now it says camel foo. Now pay attention down here. You can see foo is, oops, sorry, foo is running. And down here, I can use Stern. This is a nice little tool to tail logs. So I can see here, it says, hello, camel K from Java. It just keep on running. You can see the time going every second, it, it updates itself. So that's really nice. And I say, I can also say camel get. I can see my integration running and that's camel, the foo is running. I can say camel delete foo. And now it will stop that one. And you can, it will be terminating over there. So I can also go inside and edit this file. And I'll just use a, a, a stupid editor, a subline. Uh, not stupid, but basic. So I can actually want to show you running this again, but this time in dev mode, slash slash dev. Now it actually tailed the log also in this the main terminal. And then if I go into the editor and I say, hello, camel cave, I say K2 and I save this file, it will actually update itself and relaunch the application. So now it says, hello, Camel, Camel Cave 2. And I can also make it go quicker. So one, two, three, and I can change something like that. And then I save the file and now it updates and then, oops, now I get something. Oh, I get a compiler. And this is actually a little bit by mistake purpose, I forgot a semicolon. So you can actually, you know, fix it and then see it will be fixed by updating itself. And now it runs, well, now you can see it runs much quicker because I was, you know, it's about one, two, three milliseconds apart. So by showing you that this compile error is also revealing a bit how the magic of CAMK works, because what happens is that when and how it can be so quick is because the custom resource definition contains your code that that file, and then Camel K does the operator figures out okay what does this code do, and if it already has a pre-built container of image that can run this code, it will reuse that one, so it doesn't have to build an entire new uh, Docker image. That is the way why it's so really, really fast. Uh, I can see here, I can have the existing builds I have from my Camel K. There are two builds, one to build the 
itself, and then over time you can have new builds. That's why it's so fast. So if I start to run something I have not done before, what's less, we can say JavaScript, for example, a bar. So here, bar does, does some JavaScript code. I can say it can run bar JS. And if I say camel get, it's not running yet. And because it says building kit. So if I can cube, cube CTL, uh, this cube get builds case is a shorthand for, now it's already built. So it took uh, about 11 seconds to build that JavaScript image. And now if you say stern bar, this is the JavaScript file. And of course I can, you know, K camel delete bar. And if I say bar, oops, to update the bar file, I can say something else. This is hello camel, hello lean, uh, Peru. And camel run bar JavaScript. And now it doesn't need to rebuild the container because it's using the old one. And now you can see hello Peru from JavaScript. So it's really, really fast. And you can imagine the same for all the other length, Kotlin, YAML, Groovy, and so on. Um, I also want to show you uh, uh, what source editor you can actually get. So I'm actually starting up Visual Code. I'm just loading a single file. Oh. And it will open that file. Oh, there's a plugin called Didact that kind of automatic starts a welcome screen. That's really annoying. But here is the the full code, and you can see this is Java code, and it's actually not a. There's no Maven, there's no Gradle, there's nothing like that. It's just a single file. But this tool is able to understand. I can do code here anyway, so I can type. Um, uh, it's it's launching the. Uh, says the onion button is actually starting the Java uh, support for it. So it takes a little while. So let me try to do something else. So I can say, and so this one is um, the tooling understands the camel product. And this one is the timer component camel. And by adding a extra parameter like and, and then the, the list you see here, these are options you can use on the timer component camel. So I can say um, repeat count specifies a maximum number. So if I only want to run this three times at most, then like that, then it stops. And also the tooling understands all the common components there are. So there, I said there's about 300. You can see the list here. And you can see the description for them. There's a DADBC, JD, and Kubernetes, and many, 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 many. So you get like 300 different components you can use. And you can just start using them in, in, in common K here. And the secret up here is also something called uh, in the top. It's a mode line, camel K mode line feature. It allows you to customize a bit this application. So there's something called a trade. I want to use a trade and equals. And there's a, these are the traits that you can use. Uh, apparently a camel trade, a cron trade. Uh, that's actually quite nice. You can camel. Oh, that's a side. Let me get out of the limp here. So sometimes if you have something that a job you want to execute maybe once a minute, then Camel K can optimize that and find out, OK, this, I don't need to always run this uh, container and waste CPU time for 59 seconds and then only one time uh, a minute I, I do something. So it can actually install and, and run this as a Kubernetes cron job instead. And this is the trick that can do that. But you know, Camel detects this automatically and does this for you. So the timer here, if you say, I want to uh, wait every minute, then the Camel K operator will then detect that and say, OK, instead of wasting so much time, I'll just use a Kubernetes cron job and run it. Um, but what I want to say was the Quarkus trait. So I want to enable Quarkus, enable true, and save this one. And let's see, this was the foo. So I say camel run foo. And let's see, this is the foo lock down here. 
and foo is running you can see here and up here if you go a bit maybe the log is a bit little but you should see Quarkus here is running somewhere. Um, oh, that's a little. I'm using that one and more. Um, and it's do, 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 do. what did I want to see? It should say Quarkus somewhere. Um, yes, installed features, Camel K integration on powered by Quarkus. Yes, so that's it. So that was just another way of saying that, you know, you can run Camel standalone and, and with Quarkus. And Quarkus is actually going to be the default uh, runtime for Camel K and also the only runtime in, in the future. So it's, so we want to uh, use the power of Quarkus with the ease of Camel K in a serverless environment. So you get that out of the box without having to do anything. OK, so let's go back to the slides, and then we will continue a bit, and we'll do more demos. So CAMK is not only Java. I just want to emphasize that, because we see also a trend where not only Java develops want to do uh, integrations, and especially when you now start to have a cloud platform based on Kubernetes, then a lot of other people can actually build integration more likely. And with Camel K, we support more language. And maybe we'll get fight on another language. But these are the ones we have so far. So Quarkus, what is that? Um, so, and also why Quarkus? So there's a meme going on saying that Java is slow. And it's actually correct, but hear me out. So. Uh, Java also has, uh, besides being slow, another meme is that Java has is fat. So uh, especially on the cloud, where you want to run as many applications uh, uh, with on a node or physical hardware as possible. And uh, if you take a popular uh, Java stack, um, uh, like Spring Boot or something else, they typically end up still requiring 200 megabytes or more in memory and then being a bit slow to start up and whatnot. And then compared to alternatives like Node or Go, you can run a lot more. And that actually becomes a problem when you know you have more and more workloads and you want to go from a bigger monolithic into a microservice and functions and serverless and whatnot. Then you suddenly have hundreds and thousands of workloads. And then suddenly, if they are too fat that's, and too slow to run, that's a problem. And if that's a general problem with Java, we'll be screwed. And we'll have to maybe start to write uh, our applications for the future in other languages. And that's a really a problem. Um, but Quarkus is hopefully there to help with that. Um, yes, uh, also uh, very important in, in serverless especially is to be able to scale up and down fast. And also very important scale to serum. Because when you start to run your workloads in uh, in the cloud, or then you start actually to get paid by the usage. So you start to pay how much your CPU and network and memory you're using. And if you can reduce your cost by having a system that can automatically handle that for you. So if there's no users or few users, the, the load is, is low and it will scale down. And this is not the typical you know, metrics like CPU and, 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 and memory uses in the DVM, if you're about the max capacity, is actually user load. So depending on users. How, so for example, if you have a, a website with a shopping systems, and then a lot of users start to use that system and, and, and put uh, items in the shopping cart, you know, you can scale up the systems and handle the traffic. But that requires to for Java to be able to quickly scale up and scale down. And that's actually a model Java wasn't built for because it was built for this long, long running process, you know, a big monolithic JVM running for with you know gigabytes of memory running for months and months, and then you know you only restart it if you have some maintenance or upgrade. But that model we have to forget about in the cloud and go think about. It doesn't matter. We use a lot of small systems that can easily, easily scale up and scale down, and then the cloud system can man manage all that for us. So Quarkus is there to help for that. They have a tagline called Supersonic Subatomic Java. 
And you may not, but it actually start to make sense if you know a little bit about the name Quarkus, because Quarkus comes from the physics walls. If you look inside an atom, inside an atom, then, then the smallest unit is called a Quarkus or Quark. So that's why it's small, small Java. Um, but the Quarkus product is actually focused on being a Kubernetes na native Java stack. So it's something that's a first class for, for the cloud and Kubernetes. And it integrates with all the great uh, Java libraries and standards. And also it can actually do native compile using GraalVM. But it's very important with uh, Quarkus is that it runs in both JVM modes and also native compile. If on the website they have an example where they you know, did some performance metrics on that. So the gray one is the slowest one that's without Quarkus. It's just like something like a Spring Boot. It takes up more memory and also slower to respond. And very important is the first time to respond. And that's the actual metrics you should measure, not about I started up. Because many frameworks and app servers and whatnot kind of cheated a bit. They said, OK, I'm up and running. And then there's a request coming in. It will go say, OK, there's a request for this and this service. OK, now I start up my transaction. And now I start up you know, my locking service. Now I start up x, y, and z. And so do you get this penalty for the first response? So they measured the sending request in and until you got that response. So this is the one you want for, especially for the scaling up and scaling down. As you can see, native is really, really fast. You know, it's in milliseconds, so that's a no-brainer. And even with uh, in JVM mode, with Quarkus, you get, you know, very high speed. Uh, you can get a, a second or less sometimes. Um, and that's awesome. So just by using Quarkus, nothing else, you get like a really big win. So what I've done here is to, actually take a camel applications and did actually a native compile it on my laptop. So it's a Mac laptop. And you can see it starts in 22 milliseconds. And this is a almost four year old Mac. And camel itself starts in zero seconds. It's so freaking fast camel. And that's why all this work we've been doing in camel tree is to continue to optimize camel for this microservice serverless work where we do a lot of build time optimization and also uh, you know, prepare camel to be really fast when it runs and it's getting better and better and, and faster. So 3.7 is, is we have already got some stuff uh, after the 3.6 release that's going to make 3.7 even better. So look out, look out for that. So uh, let me just take the time. I'm not taking all the Andreas time. So let me just do a, a demo here with, with Quagos. Uh, this is my favorite camel. It's a legal camel. So uh, let's go back here and actually have another terminal. So there's a little example in, in Quarkus called uh, HTTP log. So I can open this product in, again, in Visual Code. It doesn't have to be, oh, that stupid didact. So in this one, uh, it's a standard Quark, uh, Quarkus application where we get a, a hello, hello response. And then I add a camel route. Uh, with CDI annotations, uh, you can, you don't have to. And then this one is actually used uh, something new in Camel. Um, oh, let me call the endpoint DSL. So it allows to configure Camel components in a type safe way uh, by just uh, Fluent Builder style. So these are the log component that you can configure all the endpoints parameters by code. Um, and then tool, of course, understands that. And you can run this example. Uh, so with Quarkus, you can do like this, a Maven Quarkus dev. Um, so that's the principle. Quarkus, it's a bit like Camel K, where you saw I can change the code. And then you know it did a kind of hot deployment where it immediately updated itself. Now I'm running Quarkus in JVM mode. And I can go and. Uh, and start the welcome page. This is the standard one, and this is the one you get from Quarkus. Say hello, hello. But okay, let's go quickly to Camel. Let's say Camel runs on my computer, and I can go and here say Camel runs on. Let's say Camel Q runs on. I save the file. I go back here, and I refresh. Now we can see it says Camel Q, 
So you get this same model as with Canon K. You can just code as you want, and it will always update itself. And a great trick is actually you can configure your editor to save files on uh, focus lost. So you can just flip to your web browser and immediately refresh, and you get the latest update. And Quarkus works with adding new Java classes and dependencies and whatnot. So you can just kind of keep this JVM uh, uh, Maven plugin running. And you know it always update itself. It's also it has, has a debugger enabled, so you can start to set breakpoints and whatnot. So it's really nice. Uh, coding experience with Quarkus. But what I want to demonstrate now is, yes, this is the website for Quarkus, Quarkus.io. And it has this uh, start coding thing. So you can go and, and pick your dependencies, and you can find camel and whatnot, sort of like the start spring IO. But that's not what I want to demonstrate a bit. So we do have a little time. Did I stop the applications? I probably did. So what I want to do, I have native compiled the application. So in my target directory, there is a, a runner jar. So now I'm going to start that one. And uh, okay, the terminal is white. So but it starts in 0 0.3 seconds this time. And of course, I can do the same with local host. Maybe you know, why did I close that one? And I can say hello camel. Oh, it was camel, hello. Um, it comes with um, metrics. So I can see the number of messages processed and whatnot. And health checks. This is up, liveness check. This and readiness check is up. So all that is really ready for the cloud. But let me just kill it. So what I can do now is I little script say run many. So this one will run. Uh, 100 instance of this application. So now uh, the same one is running here on 8080, but it's also running on port 8000. Uh, 8013, oh, hello, and oh, 88, for example. So it's running on all these. There's another instance running. And I can see how much memory they take by this script. They take about 2.6 uh, gigabyte. 2,600 and some uh, megabytes for 100 applications. So that's 26 megabytes each. Now I can kill all of them at once. And then I go and, you know, this one is dead, 8080. So now I start them again on many, and I quickly go here and now it's running. You can see how fast it was to start 100 instance of a different camel application running on our HTTP server, all of them with different port numbers and ready first time to response that is really free, really awesome okay i'm gonna kill these ones and then we uh, continue with the slides and we do have some uh, youtube videos of this example in you can you know watch on demand as well where we go a little more in depth and not so fast as this time so andrea will now talk about the latest product the camel cafe connector product Thanks, Klaus. So, uh, Camel Kafka Connector is the newest project in the Camel ecosystem, and uh, is based on on Kafka. And as a quick introduction on Kafka, Kafka is a distributed streaming platform, or we may say, pub uh, pub sub messaging broker. And as Camel is an ecosystem, and uh, in the Camel Kafka Connector, we are focusing on the Kafka Connect framework. Uh, Basically, uh, what is Kafka Connect? Uh, as I said, this uh, is a framework. Uh, and with, with this framework, you are able to integrate Kafka with the external system. So you can define source and sync connector to stream data in and out of a Kafka broker. And those connectors are usually pluggable. So you can write your own uh, custom connector or use something you have there out uh, in uh, connector marketplace project or whatever. And um, Kafka Connect has multi multiple features. The important ones are, are uh, that it is distributed and scalable by default, and there's also the automatic offset management. And uh, um, about the the, the, the the Camel Kafka Connector project uh, is, um, is we may say is a big uh, Kafka connector built on top of uh, of Camel. So uh, 
in this project we are building a tiny layer on uh, on top of Apache Camel and uh, we are using that to auto 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 generating the the uh, the camel connectors so basically we have the same amount of uh, connector as the components that we have in camel and uh, this project is uh, it was in the beginning a VOC uh, developed in uh, Red Hat and it was donated uh, to the Apache Software Foundation in December uh, 2019. And uh, the last, the latest release is 0.5 and we are working on releasing the, on releasing the 0.6 and uh, we are cutting the release uh, today. And you have all the documentation and about the, the connectors, how to use them and uh, some kind of basic concept in the cam in the Camel website. So I invite you to, to have a look. And uh, in this presentation, I'll, I'll show a recorded video about uh, uh, two different connectors. So the source connector based on uh, S3, so the AWS S3 connector and the SQS sync connector. So what we want to show is we are we will load the file into the NS3 bucket and uh, we will use the SUS connector. Uh, the content of this file will be ingested into a Kafka topic in a broker already running. And through the sync connector, we will see the content of this file coming through uh, an SQS queue. Uh, all through the, the, the connector. The, the aim of this project is being able of doing all of this just through through configuration. So basically you don't have to, to write to write code, but it, it could be only only configuration. So in this case in the example in the example we we see how we can uh, define a connector configuration. So you have to reference a connector class and there is a mixture uh, a mixing of uh, uh, Kafka uh, configuration and Camel configuration, and uh, this is more or less the, the approach. It's really similar between the source and sync connector. The only difference is about the naming of the connector class and the name of the of the property coming from from Camel. Okay, here is the the recorded video. Okay, so. Here uh, I'm showing the, the configuration of the of the Kafka uh, Kafka broker, and in particular in this in this demo, we will use the plugin path approach. So we will have to unzip our uh, our connector, as I'm showing here, into a particular folder. And uh, I already downloaded both the the connectors, so the AWS S3 and the AWS SQS, and unzipped into the plugin path folder. Uh, so we are already in, uh, in in good shape to to try the to try the demo, and uh, uh, what we want to do, uh, we want to load the file into an S3 bucket, and this file is uh, the hello message in this case. Uh, this is the the AWS S3 configuration file, so we know the the key will be a string, and uh, we will have to use an S3 object converter to be able to you know well convert the the, ba the body of this of this uh, file and uh, uh, in the in the second part we are the credential to uh, to log in through the AWS, into the AWS platform it's the same for the SQS uh, in this case we are pointing the camel one queue in uh, our SQS account and uh, uh, in the hello message txt we have just a message hello from camel Kafka connector in the, uh, the, the the broker is not running uh, actually, so we will start it. So we start first Zookeeper and then we start the Kafka server. Uh, this is a single a single node cluster, so nothing nothing special. But this will work really well in uh, in OpenShift and in Kubernetes too. And now we should be able to run the the connector. So we have uh, just to reference the connect standalone script the properties for connect standalone and the two file uh, of properties for the two different connector so once we start the the, the the two connector we will see we have two different route running one for consuming from s3 and one from produce for producing to to sqs and um, 
so both of our connectors are running. Uh, this is an old version of the connector, so it's based on Camel 302, but uh, the 0 0.5 is based on Camel 3.5. In our rescue, in our S3 bucket, we are gonna load the, the file in this case. So I will uh, pick my yellow message txt from from my local file, um, my local disk. Uh, in this case, the file will be loaded, and uh, on the next reload, it will disappear because the delete after read of the property of the of the component is true by default. On the SQS side, uh, if we are start the polling uh, of the of the SQS Q1, we will see there is an hello from Camel Kafka connector message. Uh, this happened through the, the Kafka topic we are pointing. In this case, the topic was my topic in the in the single node uh, Kafka broker. Uh, to show we are not cheating, I uh, I did the same uh, second time. So I reload again a low message. It will disappear, and on the SQS side we will see the a second message. So a low from Camel Kafka connector again. So this is more or less how Camel uh, Kafka connector works, and this is just a little example. But there are a bunch of new stuff we add in the in both in the 0 0.5 release and in the coming release, and uh, there is also in the more material stuff. Uh, some more examples. So let's get back to Klaus. Thanks for the attention. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, yes, and speaking of more material, then we have two slides with, uh, where you can find more. This one is, you know, videos. You can find, the, of course, the Camel website, but, you know, we have quick demos of Camel K and the Quarkus thing that I did with Honda Camels is there, and there's a longer Camel Kafka connector demo with some other connectors and as Andrea says, there's also more examples coming in, in the different products. And you can find our uh, examples to the products on GitHub. They have you know, their own repositories for examples, so Camel examples, Camel K examples, Camel Quarkus examples, and so on. And before Q&A, I just want to actually highlight the last bullet on this one, the serverless integration on Kubernetes with Camel K. That is a KubeCon talk from where Nicola um, talks about Camel K, but in more particular also K native. So I didn't really you know, touch on K native and what that means and what it does. But this this one is a very recommended talk if you want to see that one. Okay, so now we have time for Q and A, and let me just uh, stop sharing. And of course, we appreciate uh, Camel if you use it or like to use it. Then give us a star on GitHub, and you can also find us on Twitter. Uh, Camel itself also has a Twitter handle. So let me stop sharing and we go into the questions. If I can see anyone. Okay. Thank you, Klaus and Andrea. Um, good information. Uh, I am very excited uh, about uh, Camel K, Camel Quarkus, Camel Kafka Connect, uh, Connector. Sorry. Um, this project are awesome. Okay, guys, uh, huh? if you have a question, please, uh, Brian, on the text box in the Facebook or YouTube. Okay. What? Um, if there's no questions, but I, I will say that you can easily get in touch with us. So if you go to the camera website, there is a, a community. If you find that link to community, we have a chat forum. Uh, it's Sulik, that's a really awesome place. All the users are there. The mailing list uh, and on Stack Overflow and so on. And you know, you can also you know reach out to myself and Adria using those yeah. means. Sure. Okay. Okay. Only okay. only comments about uh, the session is. A good session, good speed. Um, congratulations, guys! Excellent talk. Uh, thank you very much for for this session. Um, I hope to to come to to come you for the next year in 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 uh, on presencial. Uh, oh. See 
the pandemia is off. <laughs> Yes, hopefully. Ah, so oh, hopefully, yes. Oh, okay. What question? Oh, that's a question from Victor. I have a is Quarkus is more faster than Wildfly. Yes. Yes, and uh, yeah, probably yeah. we are talking about the different different stuff. Yeah, uh, Quarkus is a very more Wildfly is a, is an application server. So yes, but. Some of the parts in Quarkus is also some of the parts in Wi-Fi. Um, there was a product called Wi-Fi Swarm that kind of had the idea of running Wi-Fi as a microservice approach. And some of the knowledge from that product is also influenced Quarkus. Um, but some of the it's some of the same people that built both of them. But Wi-Fi is still living on as an app server and it's an excellent app server following the Java E specs. So is it Jakarta specs now? So it's also a, an option. And you can, of course, also run it on Kubernetes. Anything you can put inside a container, you can run on Kubernetes. But Quarkus is kind of the future. So take a look at that. And um, one more question about uh, is there any update in, in version three about in out processing camel? Um, yes. So uh, for the people that don't know, but on a camel message, there is uh, an input and output, uh, get in and get out. And that API has been with camel all its life. It was how camel was designed, designed it, you know, in 1.0 based on JBI spec, and it has these features. But it gives a little confusion to how you use them, and basically you just end up using in all the time. Uh, so what we're doing in camel 3 is we introduced a uh, uh, get message instead. So instead of having in and out, you have just message. And then out is deprecated in Camel 3, but it will stay there. And then in Camel 4, it will be removed. So start to use get message instead and forget about in and out. OK, one more question. And uh, does Camel HDB, HDBB module support reactive? Um, yes and no. So uh, in Camel, there are many components, and we have more HTTP components. We have a classic component, Camel HTTP, using the Apache HTTP client. But there's a new HTTP client called Camel HTTP Vertex. It's based on Vertex uh, library framework, and it's reactive. So that one is reactive. OK. Uh, no more questions. Thank you, Klaus and Andrea, for this excellent talk. Have a good day and see you soon. If you want to give some final words or say goodbye to our audience. Um, Camel Rocks is awesome. So try it out. <laughs> thanks for inviting us. Thanks <laughs> okay. yeah. OK, guys. Bye. Thank you. Stay see safe. You. Take care. Bye. Cheers.